The Fall of the Western Roman Empire The Roman Empire is a successful empire. However, no empire can last forever, and after a prosperous era called the Pax Romana, Rome began to disintegrate due to various reasons. A man named Diocletian made a series of reforms, such as splitting the Roman Empire into two halves and allowing barbarians to enter the army. Although this saved Rome at the time, it was later the cause of depopulation, which led to economic and military crises, eventually causing the disintegration of the Western Roman Empire. A number of factors contributed to the depopulation of the Western Roman Empire. As the number of people in the Roman Empire decreased, the empire faced many economic problems, as well as military problems. Around 250 AD, the plague of Cyprian raged across the Roman Empire, killing millions of people. It was even said that around 5,000 people died each day from the sickness, even killing the Emperor Claudius Gothicus. This plague was a huge blow to the population and had a significant impact on the lasting Roman Empire. The depopulation also caused loss in agriculture activity. Fewer plebeians worked at the fields and were starting to work under large plantation owners which meant that a fewer number of farmers were paying taxes. And because of this, a reduction of ta in tax revenue occurred, and the government had no choice but to raise them. The farmers were not able to support themselves, and soon after just quit. And because of this, the products and food started to become more expensive and less available. Since the prices increased and the supply decreased, the poverty rate skyrocketed. These same people were not able to have children because they were not able to support them, which obviously decreased. The depopulation of Rome was a huge blow to the military and had significant effects on the fall of the western half of the Roman Empire. The loss of people in the military allowed barbarians to be hired into the Roman military, eventually allowing the barbarians to infiltrate the western empire and make their own kingdoms within it. The plague Rome was exposed to killed a large portion of their population. This meant there were less people to re recruit for the army and the size of the army decreased. As a consequence, the security on the borders fell and the borders were constantly being threatened by barbarians. Because of the small size of the Roman army, of the Roman military, the barbarians were always able to defeat it. To fix the small Roman military, Diocletian recruited barbarians into the military. Therefore, the Roman army was made up largely of barbarians. Also, as Rome's economy was in decline, they could not pay their army much and it was cheaper to hire barbarians. Nonetheless, the barbarians were not pleased, even though they had been hired to the Roman military. They wanted to become a more important part of the Roman Empire. Once they were in the military, they wanted higher wages and more important ranks. Since Rome had become extremely reliant on the barbarians, it would be a loss to their military if they didn't give them what they wanted. More problems arose for Rome. There was a, group of th there was a growing threat of barbarians that occupied the frontier of the empire. A group called the Huns attacked the barbarians living outside of the Roman Empire. So the barbarians pushed into Rome's borders, defeating their army to seek safety. These infiltrations by the barbarians in the military and into the territory of the Roman Empire played a major role in the crumbling of the empire. Recruiting barbarians in the army began to backfire on Rome. The barbarians were not always loyal to Rome. In 410, the Visigoths felt they were not getting what they were promised. So, in the Battle of Adrianople, they rebelled, fought against Rome, and won. They then sacked Rome and allowed other groups to take control of Gaul, Spain, and North Africa, putting the Mediterranean in disarray. Another group of barbarians, the Vandals, were pushed into the Roman Empire by the Visigoths. The Vandals had an agreement with an emperor to control North Africa. However, when that emperor died, the new one did not hold the agreement. This caused the Vandals to go and sack Rome and then go back and control North Africa. A group of barbarians, the Odorwalkers, wanted to be recognized in the Roman Empire and would have more power within it, so the barbarians also sacked Rome. Finally, Rome was not much of an empire, but a group of kingdoms, each controlled by a different group of barbarians. Rome was disintegrated by the barbarians infiltrating it, whether they were part of the Roman army or pushed into the empire. Never with happy with what they had, the barbarians wanted power and what they were promised. As Rome was not always able to grant them this, they were often sacking Rome, which eventually led the Western Roman Empire to fall and be controlled by many different tribes of barbarians. Along with depopulation and problems with the military, the economy took a sharp turn for the worse in the few centuries leading up to the end of the Western Roman Empire. There were many different causes leading to the, to the collapse of the economy. These include inflation, decline in trade, taxation, and the development of widespread serfdom. 
Inflation was mainly caused by the debasing and subsequent devaluation of coinage. After 80 through 56, the quality of coins dropped sharply. The silver content of the denarius fell to 50% what it had been. Diocletian tried to fix this by establishing new silver and gold pieces. Unfortunately, the debased coins continued to circulate. Later emperors issued more bronze coins while still insisting that they be pay paid taxes in gold. Thus, the value of bronze fell as well. All of this decrease in value of coins led to inflation. Products began to rise in price. For example, a loaf of bread was priced at twice what it could have been bought with before. Currency was debased even further to keep up with the rising prices, but wages did not go up as fast. This was the beginning of the economic crisis. Sea traffic was still reasonably cheap at this time, compared to land transportation. One would think this advantage would be used by the Roman Empire. However, evidence points to a decrease in trade. Here's why. First of all, people in the Eastern Roman Empire started to dominate the trading economy. Trade was also restricted across the German border to discourage Germanic tribes getting more influence. This led to the economy of the northern part of the empire declining. Meanwhile, the economy of Italy was declining as well. Evidence also points to trade guilds and the whole organization they were a part of disappearing. Taxation was also a big problem. Most people had to pay taxes in gold and silver, though we have seen that coinage was already severely devalued at this point. For example, senators had to pay taxes both in foodstuffs and in gold when a new emperor rose, and every five years after that. Since there was a change in emperors very frequently due to the untimely deaths of most, this was very expensive. The trading class also had to pay a tax in gold and silver, and it was so expensive that some parents had to enslave or prostitute their children to find the money to pay. The development of widespread serfdom played a large role in the decline of the Western Roman Empire. Slavery was declining in importance at the time, and was largely replaced by coloni, or independent small farmers beginning to work for large-scale farms due to their debt from taxes. Land was portioned out from landowners to coloni, and in return the coloni paid a sum of money from their yield, and sometimes a set amount of labor. Coloni were originally free, but this eventually changed. This change occurred because of blurred distinctions between coloni and another group of workers called tributari, who were prisoners from battles against Germanic tribes. In the 3rd century, the coloni's attachment to the manor was made enforceable by law, as laws were passed binding the workers and their descendants to their jobs and locations. This basically made them slaves, and coloni who tried to run away were liable to be brought back in chains. This contributed to a decline in motivation for agricultural productivity, which indirectly affected the cities of the Western Roman Empire. Their economies depended on local merchants and producers selling their own products. This process eventually helped collapse the economy and weaken the empire. Due to all of these causes of decline, the Western Roman Empire became decentralized and weakened socially and economically. Their invasions by Germanic tribes met with little resistance. Some people even gave aid and encouragement to the barbarians. Since the empire was so weakened internally, it didn't take more than 20,000 barbarians to attack before it collapsed. Economic issues caused the Roman government to print more money, which therefore caused uh, the devaluation of the currency and inflation. Therefore, since they were inflation, soldiers began to revolt in order to get more money because the money they had was worth significantly less. And because of this, the Romans had to start recruiting barbarians who were going to get more or going to get less money for the army. Therefore, the barbarians, however, had no loyalty to Rome, and that helped with outside invasions from their own. But since the Romans didn't have any resources in order to fight off these invasions, the invasions caused even more economic issues, which caused the cycle to begin again. However, this cycle is very similar to the way that other civilizations also fell. For example, Persia fell for a similar reason um, as the Romans. This trend continues with the Han Dynasty. Basically, due to a poor economic cycle that eventually led to their downfall, the, inf uh, the empire fragmented. Um, drawing these conclusions leads to a very simple question with a very complex answer. Why do empires collapse? Perhaps the answer is, again, for trade across the various empires. Usually there are a couple reasons an empire falls, and is almost always a combination between internal pressures and external forces. Usually internal forces, such as the foretold economic collapse in all of these and inflation, uh, cause a lack of resources from the government, mostly, uh, most importantly the military to use. 
This causes military weakness, which allows other groups, such as the barbarians in Rome, to simply walk in. Due to this, there is often political fragmentation within, where the barbarians and the Romans, uh, or where the barbarians carved out their own areas of Rome and turned it into their own little section. In final, the question of how did Rome fall is a very complex and intricate question. Historians will guess, however, they will never know for sure exactly why Rome fell. Unless time travel is invented, this question will cause endless debate between Romans historians for generations to come.